I have another insulated blanket I want to share with you today. This is the Mega Puffy from Ghetto Gear. If you're interested, keep watching. All right, before we get started, I just want to thank Ghetto Gear for sending me their Mega Puffy so that I could share it with you. So I've had this now three months, maybe a little longer. It has gone out with me on day hikes in the bottom of my backpack, not because I felt I needed it, but I just wanted to see what it would be like to pack along. And I put it on a few times to wear it out here. Do you know, when I look at this in its nylon stuff sack right now, it takes up about the same amount of space as my puffer jackets do, maybe even a little less than some of my thicker puffer jackets, about the same amount of space as my down vest does that I wear or I take out with me often. Now, it's not a piece of clothing, but it can be worn like a piece of clothing, which is what I'm gonna demonstrate in one moment. So I just wanted to show you how small it packs down. In a minute, uh, once I take it out and put it on and show you what it's like on me as a, as a cloak. Uh, then I'll sit down. I'll give you a few specifications for it. But first off, in a stuff sack, uh, I've got this. It's in a, a roll top stuff sack, but it can easily squeeze down. If you have a stuff sack with the straps on the side, a compression bag, you can get this a lot smaller than, than I have it inside its bag right now. But all right, before I take it out on the outside of the bag itself, a little carabiner, That'd be great. You could actually hang it off of your bag if you had needed the extra space inside, or maybe hang it up if it needs to be dried. Or, and there's another use for that carabiner I'll get to in a moment, so let's do take that out. So being down, it's going to take a second to loft up, keep it off the ground, of the stuff sack aside. So this is an olive green column, color. They do come in a couple of other colors, and I'll Talk to that in a moment. So what I'm looking for are dome snaps. There are three dome snaps on the long side of the blanket so that you can throw it over your shoulders to wear it like a cloak. There are a few other features I want to show you in a second as well. So let's do that. Throw it around my shoulders. Now, the top dome snap, and I gotta make sure I don't cover the microphone up here, the top dome snap comes up pretty close to my neck. So I'm not gonna do that one up, but I'll do the other two up so you can see. As I can find them again. That's the only thing I'll say about having the same color on both sides of the blanket is sometimes finding the dome snaps can be a little challenging. Where's the other dome snap? Oh, I got the mode of alignment. This will only take a second. That's better. But two, I'm going to take the microphone off, bring it to the outside here. And I'll snap up the top one. I think I'll snap up the top one. Let's try this. You can see it's quite snug around. Maybe I'll leave that off. Yeah, it's a bit snug with everything else I'm wearing right now. But there we go. You can wear it like a cloak. Let me back up. I think I need to adjust the camera a little bit so you can get the full effect of this. So you can see it wraps around me nicely and uh, I just sit down and Immediately, I can start to feel the warmth of this already from having this down on the outside of me. That's kind of, that's really kind of nice. I think I'm going to leave it on for a while while I do the rest of this video. All right, let me sit down. I'm going to give you a few specifications, show you a few features on this, and talk about its application and my thoughts on it. All right, you know, this is nice. I have my hammock chair set up here, and I can just sit back and <sighs> relax, all wrapped up in this. <laughs> okay, it is nice. That, without question, it is nice. But let's just talk a little bit about what this blanket is all about and my thoughts on it. So I do have some cheat notes here that I wanted to uh, go, go to. So first off, let's find one of the corners. This is one of the first things I want to share with you. So all four corners have little tie loops. It's like gutted paracord tied on. That's significant because that allows you a few options in terms of using it as a blanket. As I mentioned, it has the three snaps down the front that allows you to wear it as a cloak. It has halfway down the front a larger loop and right at the center behind my neck, 
uh, behind my neck is another one of those black loops. Now they give you some options in terms of how you're going to wear it. I'm wearing it obviously as a cloak right now, but you could use this and I think this is what its original intent was for use as a blanket that you could go camping with. If it be your only piece of gear for staying warm in the evening or as a supplemental piece of gear to throw on top of another sleeping bag. That's the way I would look at it. I'll get to my reasons for that in a moment. So having blankets like this have become very popular in some ultralight people, that's all they take in the right season. This is not the time of year I would be using a blanket like this by itself. That it would be, I would want more than this. How Okay, I just had an incident with the camera. The battery ran out, probably because of the cold, so I switched batteries. So I'm not quite sure what I got on that last clip or not. So uh, I'll just go back and I'll pick up at one specific point and we'll continue forward from there. Let's talk about temperature rating for this blanket. I think that's important because it is one of the features that are advertised by Get Out Gear for this. And I don't know how they arrived at it. Quite honest, I couldn't figure out how they arrived at the temperature rating. Number one, it's rated at 37 degrees Fahrenheit or 1.7 degrees Celsius comfort rating. Again, I'm not sure how they got there because when you think about it, sleeping bags, there is a very specific process for gaining the ratings that they have. To start with, a sleeping bag is an enclosed system. You're completely enclosed in it. There's no air infiltration coming in through openings all the way around. Even at the neck on modern sleeping bags intended for the winter, there are baffles and the hoods can be closed down. So it's just your eyes to your mouth open. So you're not losing any heat and cold drafts aren't coming in. So they are a closed system that can be repeated time after time. And they are matched with a sleeping pad, an insulated sleeping pad of the proper R value for the conditions that you're testing the bag out in. So when you get a sleeping bag rating that's a comfort rating and it's it's still subjective even at that, that's for the average person, that's what they find a comfort comfortable at. Some people sleep hot and they'll say, I could go down lower with this. Some people say, I was cold even at that temperature. So it is a bit subjective, but it's at least a comparable thing from one sleeping bag to another. Well, you have none of that with a blanket like this. Um, you know, it's not a closed system. It's going to have openings all the way around. It isn't uh, used. Well, uh, you would use it and I'll get to how you would use it. Uh, you, you know, it's not measured, at least as far as I know, in conjunction with a sleep pad. So again, I don't know how, unless you're measuring it against other blankets. And this is the only one I've seen that actually has a comfort rating to it. So having said that, that's not necessarily a negative. It is just, don't expect that, that you can take this blanket out in the winter or at close to freezing temperatures and stay warm with just the blanket. You got to have more than just this blanket to stay warm. Now, Here's how I would use this blanket. Obviously, like I'm using right now, it's nice and warm sitting here with this wrapped around me like a quilt. Actually, very warm as I sit here, so I do appreciate that. But the other thing I would say is look at this as a backup or an adjunct to the sleep bag you choose to go with you. So if you're going out and it's in the winter, whatever the temperatures predict it to be, and you match your bag and your sleeping bag to that temperature, and then you find that you sleep colder than that temperature rating of the bag, then you've got this as a backup that you can put on top. Or if the temperatures dropped lower than you were expecting, again, you can put this on top of your sleeping bag and up the R value of your bag just by putting this blanket over. That's the way I would look at this. Now, in warm temperatures, maybe that's all you need is something like this because you don't feel the need to have every little draft uh, leak, air leak uh, covered up. You, you know, this may be all you need in warm temperatures. But in Cooler temperatures match it up with something else. Now here's the way I use it. I've used blankets like this one that I have reviewed in the past, and that's how I would use this one as well. When Jin and I go car camping, we have cots in our tent, and we have pads in those cots, and we have sleeping bags to go with it. But we have been out in colder temperatures where the temperature started to drop lower than expected, and we had our puffies with us, and we were able to drape them over the top of our sleeping bags and give us all the warmth we needed. Plus, we could then get up in the morning when it was coffee time, wrap ourselves up like this, and go outside and be nice and warm while we're having our morning coffee. So that's the way I would look at this. Now, there are a few features on this bag that make it easier to do. To start with, as I mentioned, on the corners, 
look at the other corner as well here. They have the small black loop right here. Use that with, along with either that little carabiner that I showed you came with this to wrap around the foot of the bag to help keep it in place or wrap around the top of the bag or both for that matter and maybe a piece of gutted paracord or something to help you keep them in place. Now, if you're on the floor of a tent, you probably won't need it because it probably won't slide off of you. But when we're, we're on our cots, we find it helpful to kind of tie the ends around the bottom of the and top of the sleeping bag just to keep it from sliding off us during the night. And it really does boost the temperature. Now, this is great. You know, I really like this bag. Uh, I'm glad I got it in this color. I think I showed you the orange trim. I haven't talked too much about the quality of construction because let's just put it this way. It's spot on. It is all double stitched around the seams. It has an orange ribbon to, to reinforce that double stitching. It is single layer or sewn through design, I think is the correct way to say it. In other words, the boxes of down with, will help to keep all the boxes, keep the down in place so it's not all going to shift to one side of the blanket or another or up, and all end up in the corner. It'll stay in place but it's sewn through construction, meaning that in a sleeping bag, this is what you don't want you, because this will allow cold to travel. That's the, obviously there's no insulation right on the, the thread line and that's where cold will leak through. But if you're using it on top of something else, like just me wearing it on top of my wool uh, jacket that I have on, uh, it makes a great choice. I mentioned earlier, it has a DWR coating, uh, but I'm not gonna lay this in the snow and get on top of it because the heat will melt the snow through under me uh, in a, a little, takes a little time, of course, but once it does, then it's, it's gonna come into the bag sooner or later and it's down. And once down gets wet, then it's going to lose its insulated valve. We all know that, of course. Uh, yeah, what else can I say? Oh, that's the other thing. Laying on this blanket is not going to do you any good at all. It has to be on top of you because when you lay on, well, this is true of any sleeping bag, but even more so of down. Because down is, relies on the loft, the air that it traps as it springs open, uh, when that loft is, is gone and it really compresses, down compresses like no other material, then you've lost all your insulative value. So to lay on this, it's just like, it's, you know, it could be just two pieces of nylon together because that, that's how thin it feels. So this should always be on top of you, not under you. That's the best way to say it. All right, that sounds like a negative. I just, and it's not. Uh, this, the quality of this blanket is outstanding. The materials used in it are, are spot on. It's doing a good job of keeping me warm right now in this minus five degree Celsius weather. Uh, there's nothing bad to say about it. The fact that it's down means it's warmer for its weight and compression. You can compress this down more than you can at the synthetic bags. Um, yeah, I just wanted to make sure it stayed in focus of what this blanket can be used for and what it should not be used for, if that's the best way to say it. Okay. I think I've gone on long enough about the blanket. It is well worth looking at if blankets are of interest to you. Don't try to compare it against a wool blanket. I see them as two different animals used for different times. The only thing I can say about it is this is warmer than a wool blanket. I'll just put that out there. Much warmer than a wool blanket and much lighter. But wool has other advantages over this. And we'll leave it at that. I have a video on that if you're interested. Now, maybe I'll put that at the end of this one so you can talk, see my thoughts on the on the the two compared against each other. All the information I have, including the links, will be in the video description. If you have any comments or questions, put those in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now. Now I'm just gonna sit back and enjoy this late afternoon looking out over the snow.